Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk you through the updates I've just made to my video scratcher device. First of all, um, I've had this working pretty well in Windows now. And there are now two different versions of the device. There's one for Windows and one for OS X. The only difference between the two is the way that it outputs um, the video to a third party device for recording. Now, I have had a few questions about this as well, about whether you can export within Ableton, well, whether you can render within Ableton, um, and you can't, unfortunately. Uh, you have to do this through a third-party device. So if you want to record anything that you do on the device here, uh, you would need to either download the free Siphon Recorder, if you're on Mac, or the Spout Recorder, if you're on a PC. I'll leave links to both of these in the description. So for now, let's look at how you do this on OS X, but the same principle applies to Windows. So I've downloaded and installed Siphon Recorder. You don't have to set anything up other than to make sure that you have uh, the live video scratcher here ticked, which it should do automatically. And you press play in Ableton and record on the Siphon Recorder. And anything that's um, made here in this little window will be recorded directly into your Siphon Recorder. If you want to record audio into this recording as well, you just need to make sure that your Siphon Recorder or your Spout Recorder is set to record audio. And unless you're kind of routing things physically in and out of a sound card, you're going to need some way of streaming the audio from Ableton into your Siphon Recorder and you need to use something like Black Hole for this uh, which basically creates virtual audio cables that you can use between apps. But to be honest I would just leave the audio recording off and then kind of match this up later uh, in Ableton or in your video editor. Um, associated with this is the drop down menu I've just added as well, which is uh, where you can set your render resolution. So it defaults to 1920 by 1080 HD, uh, but you can output in any of these other resolutions as well, and your recorder device will record in those resolutions. I don't know how well it will perform in 4K, to be honest. I've never tried it. I don't actually have any 4K clips. Um, but in 1920 by 1080 it seems to work pretty well. So I've also made a few changes to the way the LFO works. Uh, let's just turn this on and play the clip. Here you can see that it's moving um, directly from the start to the end at the same speed all the way through. Uh, if you have it on a sine curve, obviously it slows down a little towards the edges, but let's just keep it on the triangle shape for now. Now if you change the curve, this will basically change the, the shape the LFO is making. So it's, as it's getting to the end, it rapidly speeds up, and then as it's moving back, it slows down again. And this can be seen on the oscilloscope that I've also added as well. Or you could have the curve in the opposite direction. And you can see this also applies to the sign shape. I've also changed the beats and bars to just a to just one drop down menu which includes everything. I've removed some of the sillier time divisions that I would imagine it's very unlikely anyone would need to use um, and added in the bar count here as well. And finally I've added a phase dial so you can basically change uh, the start point from within the two points that you've set here. The offset would change the start and the end points, whereas the phase will keep the start and the end points where they are, but change the actual starting position. Uh, this is useful if you've got a clip that you like, but it isn't quite timed up to your beat. So to demonstrate this, 
Let's just get this clip back to how it was originally. Let's put the phase back to, to the beginning. So you can see here that the arm movement here is falling on the beat. Say if we wanted it to go on the off beat, we'd just change the phase. So yeah, this kind of makes things easier if you just want to kind of nudge the video in one way, kind of forwards or backwards. So that's it, just a quick one. Um, if you have any questions, leave them below in the comments. Any suggestions or improvements you'd like me to make to the device, please leave those as well. I'm very open to suggestion. Um, and thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.